Hi, Rick Gideon here. Let me fix that. Columbiana Ecclesia of God. I want to talk about the pagan holiday of Easter. Just talk off the cuff. A few things here. I want to talk about how this name Easter evolved. It's phonier than a $3 bill. Uh, Jesus never rose on Easter Sunday. Easter cannot be found in the Bible. Uh, there's one translation, King James Version, I don't exactly know where, but they translate Passover as Easter. That's a mistranslation in your pagan King James translated Bible. They were basically pagan Christians who translated that Bible. So Easter, well, where does it come from? It comes from all the way back some 4,000 years ago in ancient Babylon. We're very familiar with that name Babylon in the Bible if you read your Bible. It's from Mystery Babylon and is part of the Babylonian mystery religion of Revelation chapter 17. The great mystery religion that has had a grip on the so-called Christian world for some 1,700 years. So Easter can actually be translated back to Babylon and the goddess Ishtar of Babylon. It begins with the name Ishtar, who Samarimus or Samarimus, the mother husband of Nimrod made herself the queen of heaven. And in Jeremiah, she is worshipped as the queen of heaven when they mixed the mystery religions with the worship of the true God. Once again, this holiday that's coming up is phonier than a $3 bill. It's purely pagan and as part of the Babylonian mystery religion that God is going to destroy in the next time they butt heads in Revelation chapter 17 and verses 15 through 17. So the so you remember the Ishtar gate of Babylon, the famous Ishtar gate? So we have number one Ishtar which is similar to Easter, for that is what it is derived out of. And what does, let's start with Ishtar. That's the first uh, word that was created, Samarimus, to describe this goddess. Ishtar, English pronunciation, is the East Semitic, Akkadian, Assyrian, and Babylonian goddess of fertility, fertility, love, war, and sex. That's why you have the Easter bunny and all those eggs. Those are signs and rites of fertility. What in the world do they have to do with Jesus' resurrection? Nothing. That's all part of the fertility rites of ancient Babylon. This Baal worship and the worship of Ishtar has to do with fertility, with the returning of spring and the time of love, sex, reproduction. It's, you know, lewd things were committed at this time during this worship. So we start with Ishtar. Now we want to go to a derivative of it. It's Ashtoreth. From Ishtar, we get Ashtoreth. Israel went after the Baals and the Ashtoreths in Judges and later on in 1 Kings. It was more Asherah, which I'll get to in 1 Kings 16. Ashtoreth, a goddess of the Canaanites, worshipped all along the seacoast from Roth 
Shamra, southward through Phoenicia and Philistia, the plural Ashtaroth, um, Ashtoreths is found commonly and refers to the idols representing her. Her male consort was apparently Baal. So whenever you erected an altar to Baal, you had to erect an Asherah pole or an Ashtoreth pole or an Ishtar pole, which was a usually a denuded tree with a woman carved into it. That was the goddess Ishtar. And this phallic symbol, this pole, which we have all over our country, the Washington Monument, is actually an Asherah pole. It, it was the shaft or the penis of Baal. And you see it all over the church steeples in your pagan churches all over this nation. We are still gripped in Baal worship and worshiping the Ashtoreths. So that's another derivative of Ishtar. Next we have Asherah. So you can find that in 1 Kings 16 when King Ahab brought Baal worship and Asherah, Asherah worship when he married Jezebel, the Sidonian, whose father was Ethbaal, he was a priest of Baal. He brought it into the northern kingdom of Israel, and we have had this Baal worship and Asherah worship, which is the Mother Mary now in the Catholic Church, that who has taken on the Queen of Heaven now. We are still gripped here in Ephraim, the lead tribe of Israel, the United States, we are still gripped in this pagan heathen worship. Real quick, further evidence includes the many female figurines unearthed in ancient Israel, supporting the view that Ash Ash Asherah functioned as a goddess and a consort of Yahweh. So they mixed it. This worship of the Queen of Heaven with Yahweh. That is what Babylon means. Confusion by mixing. Mixing truth with error. And was worshipped as the queen of heaven. You can find that a couple of places in Jeremiah. I don't know the exact scriptures. Forgive me. It's near the beginning and near the end when they went into Egypt to escape the Babylonians and... God pronounced that they would be killed in Egypt for not listening to the word of Jeremiah to stay in the land of Judah. Next we have a start. So we're getting closer to the modern name of this goddess, a start. So we have a start. A start or Ashtoreth. Hellenized form of the Middle Eastern goddess Ishtar. So we have a start coming from Ishtar, the goddess, the Babylonian goddess, Queen of Heaven, Samaribus, who actually formed the Trinity, the triune god, Nimrod, and her son, Ninus or Tammuz. That's where the Trinity came from. Worship from the Bronze Age through classical antiquity, the name is particularly associated with her worship in the ancient Levant, or group of nations, among the Canaanites and Phoenicians. Now, we have a start here. We have these pagan goddesses from the Middle East all the way back to Babylon, ancient Babylon. So what is the English translation of a start? It is Easter. My friends, Ishtar, Easter. It is nothing the, the, the first Sunday after the spring equinox. Easter. This was commanded at the Council of Nicaea by the pagan Emperor Constantine and the pagan Christians who attended this council. After the Council of Nicaea, Easter was made an official holiday 
and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which was never commanded in the Bible. This day is actually the day of celebration of the resurrection, the phony resurrection of the dead son of Samarimus, Tammuz or Ninus, on the first Sunday after the spring equinox. Paul said the mystery of iniquity was already at work in his day, and it has come in full force, and this nation is under judgment of God. It is wicked, Ephraim, beginning with its pagan religion on down. The times of the blessings from the obedience of Abraham are over, and now the curses are upon us. So, at Easter, Ishtar, that's what it's derived from, phonier than a $3 bill, it's fully pagan. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.